The competition for worst video game publisher and game company continues with Take Two not taking lying down the lead that Activision has taken with some recent developments. The release of the trilogy definitive edition of Grand Theft Auto that alone already was awful optics for a company that's already been struggling with optics, but it gets worse with some of the trademark exploitation that they've been engaging in. Now, many of you may have heard about a game called It Takes Two, which is from Hazelight. Joseph Ferris runs that studio F the Oscars man himself. And for many, this is considered to be an easy Game of the Year nominee for 2021. And for me personally, this may very well be my personal Game of the Year. Those who've played it will know what I mean, but there's just something very magical about this game and the way it constantly reinvents itself and keeps the experience fresh and exciting and magical just from beginning to end, it really hit all the right notes for me. And it's awesome to see it actually get nominated for a game of the year. And if it won out of this pack, I would not be upset at all. I kind of want it to win because indies have yet to win a proper game of the year award at the Game Awards. AAA games always take those, but plenty of indie games, I think, are deserving of that honor. But putting all that aside, unfortunately, there's a bit of a rut in front of the path of It Takes Two, as Take-Two Interactive has taken to engaging in tactics that seeks to intimidate and put down smaller developers and studios and companies through trademarks. As Ash R tweeted here, Take-Two have gone on a rampage of trademark disputes. They claim that they own the words Rockstar, Take-Two, Bully, and all variants. Remember that slippery slope? They're even trying to claim haze-like games It Takes Two is profiting off of their brand simply because the words take and two are in the title despite that being a very common phrase in the English language. Here's another Twitter user, Nibel, who covered this by tweeting, Take Two has sent a trademark claim to Hazelight because of It Takes Two, forcing Hazelight to abandon any ownership of the game's name. No details yet whether the game will be renamed or how this impacts its sales and marketing. Now there is further clarification about what this means for Hazelight and the It Takes Two name that I'll get to via tweets from people like Richard Hoeg and uh, Mike Futter. But before that, let's actually take a look at the Eurogamer article that reported this that went into detail. So the headline reads, Joseph Ferris, it takes two hit by take two claim. Hazelight abandons trademark, but remains hopeful of resolution. Just the very idea that people would confuse the video game it takes two for the company take two is utterly asinine and they're reaching far beyond. Now, when Hazelight was reached out by Eurogamer, a spokesperson said that they cannot comment on ongoing disputes for legal reasons, probably, but the team was hopeful it will be resolved. We'll see how that goes, but given Take-Two's history, I mean, they've been merciless just going after mods, and now with trademark names and them trying to essentially future-proof a lot of the words that they use for their properties and their company take two, rockstar, bully, you name it. An already scummy corporation got that much scummier. And indeed, in the US Patent Office, there is a notice of abandonment filed by Hazelight, where on March 25th, 2021, you file the request to expressly abandon your application after publication and before resignation. Your application is now abandoned and we will take no further action on it. Likely fearing repercussions, they hastily decided to backpedal as they don't likely have the manpower and resources to fight against a giant like Take-Two. I mean, unless EA, given that It Takes Two is EA published under the EA Originals program, gives them some kind of support. I don't know if that's a possibility, but yeah. For now, though, the developers have had to abandon the name that has won the hearts of so many people this year. Hazelight also didn't comment on how this would impact their ability to sell or market It Takes Two currently, any plans to rename the game, or ideas for any potential sequel. Eurogamer also reached out to Take Two, but of course they declined to comment. And to give you an idea for how wide-reaching their trademark abuse is right here, it isn't just Hazelight and Take Two. This is all part of a volley of trademark and copyright claims from publisher Take Two. And the folks at Hazelight and It Takes Two is just one of 
of dozens of victims, one of dozens of claims issued this year against a wide array of businesses and products. They're basically contesting any businesses whose name contain the words or words that sound like Rockstar, Social Club, Mafia, Civilization, you name it. So basically any words used for the titles of their franchises and their company brands. Beyond Hayes, like Take Two send claims to various other companies like a Beijing company titled Star Rocks. Then there's a clothing brand called Max Fane, which sounds like Max Payne, but anyone with common sense wouldn't confuse the two. And numerous restaurants, tattoo parlors, and other small businesses who had used the word Rockstar in their name. And small businesses is the key term here. It would seem as though Take-Two is very much exploiting the fact that these companies are likely unable to fight back or fight back as effectively as Take-Two would be able to do with their manpower, resources, and financial means. Like, there's this energy drink brand called Rockstar, but it doesn't seem like Take-Two is going after them because guess who owns that brand of energy drinks? Pepsi Corporation and Take-Two probably wouldn't want to get into a legal battle against another corporate giant. But small businesses and indie developers and studios, they are prime for the picking. You've got businesses like a brand behind music books for live performances called Think Like a Rockstar that has abandoned its trademark after Take-Two's legal claim. Just the audacity for a corporation to claim that they own these common words like bully, like rockstar, like take two. Words like mafia and civilization that are commonly used in the English language or in other works of fiction or non-fiction. Utterly ridiculous. The term rockstar is also used for businesses like rockstar axe throwing, which again, anyone with common sense will differentiate that from think like a rockstar or rockstar games or rockstar the energy drink. Rockstar axe throwing is a Florida based axe throwing company. Now in this case, this is a business that's not taking this lying down. They're trying to oppose take two's trademark grab, though it is one of many now caught in a messy series of extensions and challenges. And that's how take two intends to weather these businesses down. Anyone who attempts to fight back will just have this process extended and there'll be many roadblocks ahead for them. Games industry lawyer Richard Hoek delved into this in a series of tweets that read, I talked extensively about this issue in virtual legality a few days ago. The It Takes Two question isn't nearly as bad as the sheer volume of extensions and challenges that Take Two uses to extract concessions from applicants. Again, it's all about wearing them down. It's sort of this war of attrition almost. Richard's statement then continues. In particular, you can start to see applicants premptorily limit their applications to try to avoid getting extended out, as well as plenty of folks with legitimate applications simply choosing not to fight by defaulting on the opposition. Unfortunately, take two scare tactic is working. A lot of people are saying this is not worth fighting. If you take a look at the trial and appeals board, you can see that take two has filed at least extension requests for 25 challenges in the last three months. Most other game companies go back six or seven years to get to that number. Take two is being very, very aggressive, more so than other similar video game companies who do this kind of stuff. Take two is being especially scummy about this. Richard then highlights what the future might hold. It takes two by comparison isn't a company name and it's of limited use in any event due to the sheer number of goods and services that already use the phrase. I would suspect they simply wind up going untrademark and relying on copyright. The links to that board are included in the video links if you want to check it out for yourself. There are some legitimate challenges there, particularly on software, but take two itself seems to challenge or at least extend almost anything it can find using one of its words to a degree that clearly just crosses lines and that people deem to be absolutely ridiculous. Take-Two is no longer taking steps to protect itself. It's taking steps to just abuse the system to bring other small businesses down, essentially, or to make their lives more difficult to subdue their ability to brand their products in a manner that doesn't really conflict with take two zone branding because again anyone with common sense can distinguish these different brands and products and names and you name it. From there, when Nibel expressed how 25 challenges in three months sounds absurd, Richard Hoek added, it's a lot, but many take the form of extension requests. Take Two's first move appears to be to ask for more time to object in many, many instances. But that alone can chill the use of words when you know they're going to slow the process for you. So Take Two knows exactly what they're doing, and this is something they can weather in the long term in ways that these smaller businesses cannot. It's also important to highlight the 
difference between copyright and trademark, with Richard Hoek here stating that It Takes Two would probably have to rely on copyright, but will end up going untrademarked. Here's a good description from nerdwallet.com. Copyright protects literary and artistic materials and works, such as books and videos and video games, and is automatically generated upon creation of the work. A trademark, on the other hand, protects items that help define a company brand, such as a business logo or slogan, and require more extensive registration through the government for the greatest legal protections. And then scrolling further down, there is a summary that goes a little into more detail. Copyright protects original work. Trademark protects items that distinguish or identify a particular business from another. And another important bit to note is that copyright does expire after a set period of time, whereas a trademark doesn't expire provided the mark continues to be used. And because It Takes Two isn't a company name, whereas Take Two is, that might give Take Two an advantage, and that might force It Takes Two to rely on copyright, as the game itself is original work that is automatically protected. But in terms of the trademark of It Takes Two, because Take Two is claiming under ridiculous terms that it's too similar and too confusing and people might mistake It Takes Two with the Take Two brand. They're uh, saying, no, you cannot trademark this. And so what that all means, according to Mike Futter, who is a business analyst, is, quote, the trademark conflict means that Hayeslight cannot protect the name, not that they'll be forced to change it. They could change it if they want to protect the name, but honestly, it's probably not worth it for them to do that. Again, it's more for future proofing in case, say, Take Two might want to use a slogan that sounds more like It Takes Two, and they want to make sure that uh, that company can't interfere with that and whatnot. Mike Fodder details this. Take Two isn't saying that Haze Light is infringing, but it doesn't want them to be able to protect the name and put it out of uh, Take Two's reach since it is so close to their company name. Imagine if they wanted to make their company motto, It's Take Two. That slogan might be too close to the game name, which would be protected. Take Two isn't suing anyone, but it is objecting to trademarks that include or are close to its company and division names. It is probably overreaching in some of these instances, in many of these instances. And then the difference between trademark and copyright comes into play when Mike Fodder responded to another Twitter user by stating that the issue here is that they objected to the trademark. They could still use the name, meaning it takes two in Hazelight, but so could anyone else without Hazelight being able to do anything about it. Basically, the specific branding of It Takes Two, the title of the game, is a phrase that maybe Take Two might use one of these days, and they want to be sure that Hazelight cannot protect that title and name because Take Two wants to make sure they have that secured just in case. And while Take Two has yet to force Hazelight to change It Takes Two's name or claim that their name is causing confusion and whatnot, the fact of the matter is that this does leave the possibility open for Take Two one day down the line to force Hazelight to change their name if one day they feel like, yeah, no, your name's just too close to our company's name. And given how Take Two has been so mercilessly treating modders where they're like, all right, you can do mods, and then they out of the blue change their modding guidelines without telling everyone one, and then when a Trilogy Remaster is about to release, they go after these mods that people have had up for years. I'm certainly not ruling out the possibility that down the line, Take Two might get pretty merciless in their pursuit of the It Takes Two naming and branding that they don't wish Hazelight to be able to protect. And this is something that this Twitter user kind of pointed out. If Take Two has TM rights for entertainment classes, they can try to get Hazelight to change the name if a strong likelihood of confusion. I've worked in international TM law. No point having TM rights if you can't enforce them. Mike Fodder did acknowledge that there is truth to this, stating that while I think there is an optics thing in play here that would prevent them from going that far, oh, I wouldn't put it past Take Two. That's a company that does not care about optics and will do really scummy things. I mean, the way they've been going after modders is a prime example. That was That's all just really awful optic, especially after the disastrous launch of the Trilogy Definitive Edition of Grand Theft Auto that did a far worse job than what the modders have pulled off and in many ways is a regression from the classic versions as well. So optics isn't really, I don't think, a major factor in the decisions that Take-Two makes, just personal opinion. But I don't disagree that they could do it, just that they aren't at this point trying to force a name change. But who knows down the line when they might. And that's the problem. This Kotaku article explains the intention behind this move by Take-Two. The reason companies make moves like this is essentially to future-proof their own rights. If Take-Two decided it wanted to do a whole advertising campaign around It Takes Two, for instance, 
At that point, EA or Hazelight could enforce their own trademark to prevent this by forcing them to abandon it now. Take-Two doesn't need to worry about the future. If some of you are getting a sense of deja vu from all of this, that's because a similar situation happened back in 2012 when Bethesda tried to claim that Mojang's game, Scrolls, infringed on trademark, that the name was too close to Elder Scrolls and that people would confuse Scrolls with Elder Scrolls, just completely reaching, completely asinine in its logic. Now, Notch did tweet on March 10th, 2012, that they did eventually sell things with Bethesda and everything, which is great. But at this juncture, Minecraft was already widely popular. Mojang had already made tons of money, so they probably had a bit more f power to fight this stuff. Hazelight, on the other hand, unless they are going to get legal support from EA's teams and whatnot, you know, they're a smaller studio and just prefer to try to settle this as peacefully as possible instead of getting into this whole big legal confrontation, especially when Take-Two is willing to use nefarious means like extensions to draw this whole process out to try to bleed anyone who fights back dry and engage in a war of attrition that they know they'll win. Just an incredibly scummy and exploitative thing to do and a prime example of how companies twist the arms of smaller businesses and try to bury them or screw them in ways that'll benefit them you know, big fish eating little fish and all that stuff. And the gaming community as a whole has shown solidarity and support of Hazelight. And we're even seeing articles like this. Take two is being a dick. Uh, yeah, 100%. And when have they not been, frankly? I really hope that when the Game Awards kick off later in December, Joseph Ferris will have uh, strong sentiments to share about the company. Like he had things to say about uh, the Oscars. For my part, and I think uh, for the part of many games industry pundits and folks in the games industry, gamers, players, you name it. Uh, I think Neo from The Matrix said it best. How about I give you the finger? Yeah, how about you take two of these middle fingers, take two. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything you need to know about the current circumstances surrounding this trademark dispute between Take-Two and all these other smaller businesses, including Hazelight. Let me know in the comments below what you think about all of this, and if you have legal knowledge about this, share any insight you can in the comments below as well. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.